everybody and welcome to your beginner Edmodo tutorial. Edmodo is an awesome platform that allows for collaboration between teachers and students and students and students. And I'm going to show you as a teacher how to create an Edmodo account and kind of show you, give you a little tour around Edmodo so that you can see some of the basic features that Edmodo includes. I'm going to show you how to create a group and I'm going to show you how students can join that group and what you can do in the group. So the first thing that you can do is go to www.edmodo.com and you'll be at this screen here and what you're going to do is you're gonna click on I'm a teacher now whether you're a teacher an administrator or anybody else involved in education in order to join Edmodo you always need to click on the I am a teacher button notice for your students they'll be clicking here I'm a student for parents of students they can click on the I'm a parent button Administrator, this is actually just for Edmodo administrators or administrators of subdomains of Edmodo. So we're going to focus here on this button, I'm a teacher. Now as you can see, we can sign up now and it is free, so I'm going to click on I'm a teacher. And you're going to fill out just some very basic information about yourself. First name, last name, the email address that you want to associate with your Edmodo account a password and you're gonna click that you agree to the terms of service and click the sign up button now when you pick your email address think carefully about this because once you lock one email address into your Edmodo account that is the address that you will continue to use for your teacher account with Edmodo so you might want to make it your work email address you might want to make it a personal email address um, but just know that once it's attached to your teacher account um, that's the one that you're kind of locked into to using um, so for instance I have a teacher account I also have a student account because sometimes I like to log in as a student to show my students what they'll see and where to click and that kind of thing and I also have a parent account so for each of those different accounts I had to use a different and unique email address so just keep something to keep in mind so once you fill in that information and you click the checkbox you're gonna click sign up so I'm going to go ahead and log in to my teacher account. So I'm going to click log in. Now the first time after you create an account, <clears throat> let's say you create your account from home. The first time you log into Edmodo at school, if your school happens to have a subdomain like mine does, it's going to ask you for a school verification code. This is very important because it pulls all the teachers in the same school underneath the same subdomain or the same umbrella. And the reason that that is important is because it keeps all the students at that school <clears throat> from being able to create teacher accounts because the students aren't going to have access to that teacher verification code. You can get this code by contacting your school administration or your school technology specialist or if you're at my school you can contact me and I can get that code for you. Um, so that's really important that you use that code to verify that you are a teacher. So here we are, we've logged into the Edmodo account. Um, and the first place, I'm going to show you, kind of take you on a tour across the top blue bar here. So this is your home page. Whenever you click on this button, it's going to take you back kind of to your home view. This particular button will show you the progress. Um, so this is where you would go to look at your grades and things like that if you choose to create assignments and grade assignments on Edmodo for your classes. This is where you would look at that. Um, Discover is a place where you can find resources that other teachers using Edmodo are using that teacher same content area. So that's a pretty neat one. This is your library. This is where you have free unlimited storage. You can upload file sizes up to 100 megabytes and you have free and unlimited storage. So unlike Dropbox or something else where you pay $99 a year for free unlimited storage, you can actually store everything for free in Edmodo and you can organize it by folders and things like that. This is your notifications bar, so it just kind of shows you what's going on and you can check in there. And then here is your profile um, area under the Me button. So let's start with the Me button. So go ahead and click on Profile, which is at the top of your Me. 
okay once you go into profile um, this is what you're gonna see you'll see your profile overview you'll see communities um, and you can see you can connect with other teachers invite other teachers show all your connections and that kind of thing um, in this particular area you will see your teacher badges that you have earned so once you type in that verification code for instance um, you will get a verified teacher uh, badge that you can see you have your student badges here and your um, favorite websites or things like that you can store in here as well just to let you know your students and any parents that connect with the Edmodo account cannot see this all they'll typically see is your profile picture and your name um, they might see this information here um, but but um, only other teachers you connect with on Edmodo will be able to actually explore in your profile so I'm going to click on settings now. Okay, in settings, this is where you can actually um, upload a profile picture. So you can select one of these little dummy options or you can click upload a new photo and then you can go into your pictures on your computer and upload um, one of your pictures. This will be your email address. You can add a secondary email address if you want to have, you know, another option to recover your account if need be. But just remember, um, you know, you, you may want to consider having several different email addresses if you want to have a um, fake student account and a fake te uh, parent account just so you can kind of log in as a parent or a student and troubleshoot if your uh, students or parents are having issues um, in their Edmodo account. You can go ahead and enter in your name information here. Um, you definitely want to go ahead and add your country and this is very 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 important a lot of people skip this option you actually need to go ahead and put in your time zone oftentimes if you create assignments and your children tell you Edmodo says it's late it's typically because you have not set your time zone correctly you can click uh, add your school area here or change your school area and you can claim your URL your profile URL down here um, so if you were to share this particular web address, it would take people to your Edmodo profile. Okay, um, so these are your options in your settings here. So I'm going to click on email and text updates. And as you can see, I actually have mine set for text message updates. Now what this does is when my children post things on Edmodo or when my teacher friends post things on Edmodo, I receive a text message to my phone. Obviously I have unlimited text messages. I certainly wouldn't want to pay for that. So um, I have typed in my phone number here. I've chosen my phone provider and I can choose in this checklist here things that I want to receive text messages for and things I do not want to receive text messages for. As you can see, I receive text messages for everything, but if something got a little overwhelming for me I could come in here and uncheck any of these at any point in time your other option is you could receive email messages if you chose to instead of text messages um, if you're kind of getting a whole lot of um, messages or emails and it's a little overwhelming for you consider coming into your settings and clicking in your email or text updates and unchecking some of these things I like to kind of see what all of my students are saying at all times so I want all of these things coming to my phone so that if there's an issue or if I need to address something with my students um, it'll come to my phone and notify me and I can quickly log into Edmodo and um, help my kids out if they need that okay so clicking on password this is where you would actually change your password if you ever were to want to do that and then clicking in privacy you can decide to block connection requests only show profile to your connections which is what I have checked here um, and and show grade level on your profile so if you choose you know any of those options you can save privacy settings I only show my profile to my connections this is what keeps my students and parents from being able to see it if I wanted my students and parents to be able to click on my profile and be able to see information about me I would just uncheck this and click save um, but I like just you know my fellow colleagues to be able to see what's in my profile so I have set that privacy option for myself so it's your choice whatever you would like to do um, there's a help button here so that you can click for help anytime you need that 
um, and there's a lot of topics here where you can um, we're defaulted to I'm a teacher so you could actually search for a question or you could scroll down here and you know click on any of these if you need some immediate help and that kind of thing and um, they're pretty good Edmodo the support team here is pretty good about putting screenshots and really good directions in there for you so that's an option um, to keep in mind you always have access to help at any point in time so let's see what else we have in here. We can report a problem if we notice a bug or something like that. We can report it to the Edmodo team so they can fix it. We can invite teachers. And then this is very important. We can log out here as well. Okay, so that's just generally kind of the settings area. Um, so that's where you would want to kind of go and set up first. Now over here under your, pro notice we're back at the home area. Over here under your groups, this is where you're actually going to create your different groups. So when you are ready to create a group for your students, you're going to click the plus button here and you're going to click the create option. Okay, so this is where you're going to create your group. Now couple of things to keep in mind before you decide on your group name. Once you name a group that particular name, you can't ever use that name again. So one of the suggestions that I have for you, especially if you're making a group of students, is to start with the year, the school year. So maybe 2013 to 2014, um, and then you can type, you know, the name of your, your group. So if I named this group Social Studies and didn't have the year in there, I'd never be able to use that name again. Um, but since I have added the uniqueness of the school year, I can use the same um, group name again next year with my different uh, school year dates in there. So you can go ahead and select your grade. I happen to teach seventh grade, or you could do a range if you teach a range. Um, and I teach Social Studies, so I'll go ahead and click that option. Um, and I kind of teach all of these so what this does is it sort of helps you in that discover area so when um, other social studies teachers in the seventh grade share resources it'll bring them into your little discover area up here for you um, it helps you to kind of connect with other like-minded people okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click the create button um, and it gives you kind of some more options here so I can type in my expected group size and what that will do is give me a progress bar so as kids join I can kind of see how close or far away I am from my grouping full um, and you can also actually type a description here this is a test demo group for a so I'll just type something in so I can show you where that shows up and then I can click finish okay so now I have my group and it automatically defaults me to join so this is my little progress bar so it will slowly fill up as my kids join and I have a group code here as you can see this is the code that I would actually give to my students to be able to join my group so this group is empty at the present time it shows that you can invite students by giving them the code and a best practice is to lock the group code once all your students have joined and that this code will automatically lock whoops it will automatically lock 14 days um, after today and that's just a best practice for for safety purposes as you can see the group code is unlocked up here so we can choose to lock it or reset it um, at any point in time so once our students join go ahead and lock the group if you have new kids come in after that you can just reset the code and give the new student the new code and once they're in you can lock the group back up again so as the teacher you have total control over the safety and security of your groups you can also share folders create assignments and get your classroom discussion going so um, let me show you kind of a, a little bit about oh and this is where our description popped up by the way this is a test demo group for a tutorial so anything that you type about your class can be right over here in this little box here um, you can also change your group settings at any point in time and you can share if you're um, doing a professional development group with teachers you have a group URL here that you can share and when people click on this if they're already logged into Edmodo it will send you a request for somebody to join your group and you can approve or deny those requests. 
Um, you can also choose to show the group's post in your home page and to send you text or email updates for this particular group. So if this is a group that you're not interested in having the post show up on your main home screen, you could uncheck this. Or if you do not want to receive updates for this specific group, you can uncheck this. Now, as we're on that note, I'm going to go back home for a second where all my groups will show up. So you can see I have all these groups. So let's say I have joined some teacher group um, and I choose, let's go into the Minecraft group. I don't want to have these particular notifications show up on my screen any longer. I could click in the settings here. I can withdraw from this group at any point in time and I could uncheck show and latest posts or send me um, message updates. Um, so you always have that option no matter what group you're in. So let's go back home. So in your home screen, you'll see all of your groups. And then if you want to go in and look at one particular group, as we just did, you can just click on that particular group and go in and see what's going on in that group. And the way that you get back is you click on your home button. You can also change the colors of your little squares here by just clicking on them and picking a different color. And that way it kind of helps differentiate your groups for you. All right, so let's go back in the group that we just created. And here's my code. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to show you how a student would actually join my group. OK, so here is my student, Sally Smith. This is me. This is my fake student. Um, so I'm logged in as Sally Smith. And Sally is a, a member of several groups already. So maybe she has already joined a math group and a Spanish group and a social studies group or what have you. And now she's in my class and she's going to join my group. Sally just clicks the plus button. Now notice students do not have the option to create groups. They only have the option to join a group. So I'm going to type the code in here and I'm going to click join and it will show that the group has been joined successfully and now as you can see that group has shown up in Sally's list right here this is the group we just made and Sally can change colors of her square as well to help her differentiate so as Sally I can now click in here I now see that two people are in here Miss Beard and Sally the teacher and the student um, and as a student I can click in here and see who is um, in this particular group. Now if I click on my teacher, as you can see in the profile there's nothing in here and that's because of how I set up my profile settings, my privacy settings uh, earlier. So let me go back home. Now let's say that I don't have an Edmodo group yet as a student. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. So if this is my first time to Edmodo and my teacher just gave me the group code at school today and now I'm home, I'm going to click on I'm a student after I go to Edmodo.com and see I have to have the group code here in order to sign up for an Edmodo account. Okay, so I would paste that same group code here. I would create my username and password. If I have an email, if I'm old enough, I could type that in. I do not have to type in an email address to have an Edmodo account, and that's great. If I'm 13 and under, I'm not legally allowed to have an email address, um, and so I don't have to have one with Edmodo, which is great. And then I would type in my first and last name, click that I agree, and click sign up. So that's how you would do that as a student if you were here for the very first time. Okay, let's go back into teacher mode. So here we are in our group. Um, and let me just show you how to quickly post a couple of things. Up here at the top of your group list, um, you have different tabs. So if you just want to post a note to the group, hello group, um, then you could type your note in here. And you want to make sure that it's going to the right place. Um, so once you're in a group, it will auto default to that group. Um, but if I don't want it going to that group, I could X out here and type in the group name where I want it to go. Um, in notes, you are not limited to the amount of characters that you can type in. You could type and type and type. And you can also add files from your computer, links from the web, things that you put in your library. Now, this is my favorite. You can also schedule messages to post at a certain time. So you could choose a day and a time for it to post. 
and you click OK and it will send it at on that day at that particular time or you could just say never mind I've decided to send it now and send it now. Once you have you know added whatever it is that you want to add let me just type in a I'll add a link so I'll click attach and now I see my web link is here now if I happen to have put the wrong web link I could always X out and delete it so now I'm gonna click the send button and watch what happens okay so now all of my directions have gone away because I've set up my account and I have made my very first post um, so now the students will be able to see my post so I can log back in as Sally <clears throat> and click in my group and I can see that uh, Miss Beard has posted something to this group. Okay, um, alerts are interesting. You are limited to 140 characters and when you type an alert it appears in all bold. You can also um, delay send or schedule your alert to go out a, at, at a certain time. Okay, so this appears in all bold. Again, you're limited on characters. Notice you also don't have the opportunity to attach anything. So if you want to add a link, you have to actually you know, put it in the 140 characters that you have. And you can't attach any files for an alert. So sometimes I'll say, I'll type in an alert, make sure you study for your test tomorrow, and then I'll go in and add a note that says attached is the study guide or whatever. You can create assignments. Um, so when you click in here, you can type the assignment title, type a description, you can add um, files, Word documents, PowerPoints, web links, anything from the library, videos, whatever it is that you would like to attach to this assignment. You can even schedule the assignment to post at a certain time. And you can check this to lock the assignment after it's due. So if you don't want students to be able to turn the assignment in after the due date, you would check this. I always leave that open um, because there's always some type of extenuating circumstance, isn't there? So, you know, I like my kids to have the option to turn it in after the due date if necessary. Or sometimes I'll send it back to them and say, listen, you need to fix this or that and turn it in again to me. Um, and so I want them to have that option. You will um, decide on your due date here and then you could click send. You can also create quizzes in Edmodo so I could type uh, click on create a quiz you would title your quiz right up here you can decide on a time limit you have some options here you could do multiple choice questions true false short answer fill in the blank matching or a mix and match of all of these things um, and when you're finished creating your quiz you just click assign quiz so let me go back back home let's see what other options we have oh we have the poll option so if you want to do a formative assessment or just kind of check in with your kids then you can do that you can add additional answers if you want to and again you can schedule this to go out as well you just can't attach anything to it so I could click send and then here's my poll so as a student let me refresh shows I have two new posts okay so as a student I now see Miss Beard's post I see the alert and here's my poll um, so I can vote yes I need more time and click vote and all I will see as from a student point of view is um, a general uh, compilation of responses but I can't see who responded um, in which way so it doesn't tell me the names of kids who responded in certain ways it only tells me um, overall how many kids said yes and how many kids said no. Okay, so I can see that there's been one vote for this answer and no votes for this answer. And as a student, I can refresh that. But again, I can't see who voted for which option. So it is anonymous. And then from the teacher point of view, let me refresh. 
I it's the same way um, I can see that one child responded this way but I can't see who it is um, so just know that it's kind of an anonymous thing if you want to know what each individual child says and responds um, my suggestion would be to do a quiz um, let's see Oh, let's talk about the library quickly this will be the last thing that I cover in this particular tutorial the beginners tutorial I don't want to overwhelm you too much um, this is your library where you can keep all different kinds of documents in here um, so the way that you would add to your library is you would just click the add to library button and you can upload a file you can also add web links um, you can also add videos and as I said you have a hundred megabyte maximum file upload per file which is a pretty pretty good size um, so you would just click upload file and then you would navigate on your computer um, to where you know that file is and you would upload it from there so and then it would appear in your library just like this now once you have a an item in your folder you can click the checkbox and you can click add to a folder and you can um, you know check any I have a lot of folders in my library so you could you know decide to add it to a particular folder and click apply so keep that in mind so let me show you what folders look like let me click on my folders okay so these are all my folders here um, and as you scroll down you can just keep keep clicking more they tend to be in alphabetical order so let's see let me just click on a folder that I know has a lot of things in it for you to see I'll do a uh, gamification quest okay so once you open the folder um, you can see all the resources that you have inside um, and you have a few different options you could make the folder public here you could share it with a group um, so if I wanted to share it with that group that we just created I would just click on um, that group here and then the group would be able to go into their backpack and into their folders and see the folder um, so I'll go ahead and do that here so I will give that the group we just created access to the gamification quest folder now the other thing that's cool about this is you can actually share a link to your folder of resources um, with somebody somebody who does not have an Edmodo account and you do that by clicking make this folder public and then you would send them the link and they would be able to actually see this uh, this folder okay so I'm gonna go back home and let me go in as a student here and I'm gonna refresh so let's say I've shared a folder of resources with my class um, so here I am a Sally the student in my class I would click on folders and here's the folder of resources that Miss Beard has shared with me so I can look through that folder of resources as a student okay all right so that pretty much wraps up the beginner Edmodo tutorial you always want to make sure that you click on me when you're finished for the day and you click the log out button and that brings you back to the home screen and that's the beginner Edmodo tutorial I hope you found this tutorial helpful